prayer and praying men by edward mckendry bounds prayer and praying men introduction reverend edward mckendry bounds was passionately devoted to his beloved lord and savior jesus christ his devotion was extraordinary in that he was praying and writing about him all the time except during the hours of sleeping god gave bounds an enlargedness of heart and an insatiable desire to do service for him to this end he enjoyed what i am pleased to term a transcendent inspiration else he could never have brought out of his treasury things new and old far exceeding anything we have known or read in the last half century bounds is easily the beetle goose of the devotional sky there is no man that has lived since the days of the apostles that has surpassed him in the depths of his marvelous research into the life of prayer he was busily engaged in writing on his manuscripts when the lord said unto him Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. His letters would often come to me in Brooklyn, New York in 1911, 1912, 1913, saying, Pray for me that God will give me new nerves and new visions to finish the manuscripts Wesley was of the sweetest and most forgiving disposition but when aroused he was a man of the keenest penetration with a gift of speech that bit like the stroke of a whip Bounds was meek and humble and never did we know him and never did we know him to retaliate upon any of his enemies and never did we know him to retaliate upon any of his enemies he cried over them and wept praying for them early and late Wesley was easily gullied my brother said charles on one occasion in disgusting accents was i believe born for the benefit of knaves no man could impose on bounds credulity he was a 
diagnostician diagnostician of rare ability he was a diagnostician of rare ability he was a diagnostician of rare ability bounds shied away from all frauds in profession and would waste no time upon them wesley was preaching and writing all day bounds was praying and writing day and night <coughs> wesley would not allow any misinterpretation of his doctrinal positions in his late years bound in this respect was very much like him wesley came to his fame while yet alive he was always in the public eye bounds while editing a christian advocate for 12 years was little known out of his church was little known out of his church wesley at 86 could still preach on the streets for 30 minutes bounds was able at 75 in the first hour of the fourth watch to pray for 3 hours upon his knees wesley at the time of his death had enjoyed 56 years of preferment his name was on every tongue christianity was born again in england under his mighty preaching and organization bounds was comparatively unknown for 50 years but will recover the lost and forgotten secret of the church in the next 50 years wesley's pity and genius and popularity flowed from his early life like a majestic river bounds has been dammed up but now it is beginning to sweep with resistless force and a ray long he will be the mighty amazon of the devotional world henry crabbe robinson said in his diary when he heard wesley preach at colchester he stood in a wide pulpit and on each side of him stood a minister and the two held him up his voice was feeble and he could hardly be heard but his reverend countenance especially his long white locks formed a picture never to be forgotten the writer of these lines gave up his pulpit in brooklyn in 1912 to reverend e m bounds just 10 months before his death his voice was feeble and his periods were not rounded out his sermon was only 20 minutes long when he quietly came to the end and seemed exhausted Wesley had sufficient money and to spare during all his career bounds did not care for money he did not 
depreciate it he considered it the lowest order of power wesley died with an eye beaming and lips breaking into praise the best of all is god with us pounds wrote the writer of these lines when he is ready i am ready i long to taste the joys of the heavenlies wesley said the world is my parish bounds prayed as if the universe was his john wesley was the incarnation of unworldliness the embodiment of magnanimity bounds was the incarnation of unearthliness humility and self denial wesley will live in the hearts of saints for everlasting ages bounds eternally wesley sleeps in city road chapel grounds among his bony dead under marble with fitting tribute chiseled in prose awaiting the resurrection bounds leaves in washington georgia cemetery without marble covering awaiting the bridegroom's coming bounds leaves in washington georgia cemetery without marble covering awaiting the bridegroom's coming these two men held ideals high and dear beyond the reach of other men has this race of men entirely gone out of the world now that they are dead has this race of men entirely gone out of the world now that they are dead let us pray Homer W Hodge Brooklyn New York Prayer and Praying Men Chapter 1 praying saints of the old testaments the holy spirit will give to the praying saint the brightness of an immortal hope the music of a deathless song in his baptism and communion with the heart he will give sweeter and more enlarged visions of heaven until the taste for other things will pall and other visions will grow dim and distant he will put notes of other worlds in human hearts until all earth's music is discard and songless he will put notes of other worlds in human hearts until all earth's music is discard and songless reverend em bounds old testament history is filled with accounts of praying saints the leaders of Israel in those early days were noted for their praying habits prayer is the one thing which stands out prominently in their lives to begin with 
note the incident in Joshua 10 where the very heavenly bodies were made subject to prayer a prolonged battle a prolonged battle was on between the Israelites and their enemies and when night was rapidly coming on and it was discovered that a few more hours of daylight were needful to ensure victory for the Lord's hosts Joshua that sturdy man of God stepped into the breach with prayer the sun was too rapidly declining in the west for God's people to reap the full fruits of a noted victory and Joshua seeing how much depended upon the occasion cried out in the sight and in the hearing of Israel Son, stand thou still upon Gideon and thou moon in the valley of I alone and the sun actually stood still and the moon stopped on her course at the command of this praying man of God till the Lord's people had avenged themselves upon the Lord's enemies. Jacob was not a strict pattern of righteousness prayer to his all night praying yet he was a man of prayer and believed in the God of prayer so we find him swift to call upon God in prayer when he was in trouble he was fleeing from home bearing Esau on his way to the home of Laban a kinsman as night came on, he lighted on a certain place to refresh himself with sleep. And as he slept, he had a wonderful dream in which he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on a ladder which stretched from earth to heaven. It was no wonder when he awoke, he was constrained to exclaim, Surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not then it was he entered into a very definite covenant with Almighty God and in prayer vowed a vow unto the Lord saying if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace and shall the Lord be my God and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house and of all that thou shall give me I will surely give one tenth unto thee With a deep sense of his utter dependence upon God and desiring above all the help of God, Jacob conditioned his prayer for protection, blessing and guidance by a Solomon vow. Thus Jacob supported his prayer to God by a vow. Twenty years had passed while Jacob tarried at the house of Laban and he had married two of his daughters and God had given him children. He had increased largely in wealth and he resolved to leave that place and return home to where he had been reared. Nearing home it occurred to him that he must meet his brother Esau whose anger had not abated notwithstanding the passage of many years. God, however, had said to him, Return to thy father's house and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. In this dire emergency, doubtless God's promise and his vow made long ago came to his mind, and he took himself to an all-night season of prayer. Here comes to our notice that strange in 
inexplicable inexplicable incident of the angel struggling with jacob all night long till jacob at last obtained the victory i will not let thee go except thou bless me and then there is and then there in answer to his earnest pressing and importunate praying he was richly blessed personally and his name was changed <coughs> but even more than that when but even more than that god went ahead of jacob's desire and strangely moved upon the angry nature of esau and lo and behold when jacob met him next day esau's anger had entirely abated and he vied with jacob in showing kindness to his brother who had wronged him no explanation of this remarkable change in the heart of esau is satisfactory which leaves out prayer Samuel the mighty intercessor in Israel and a man of God was the product of his mother's prayer Hana is a memorable example of the nature and benefits of importunate praying no son had been born to her and she yearned for a man child her whole soul was in her desire so she went to the house of worship where Eli the priest of God was and staggering under the weight of which bore down on her heart she was beside herself and seemed to be really intoxicated her desires were too intense for articulation she poured out her soul in prayer before the lord insuperable natural difficulties were in the way but she multiplied her praying as the passage means till her god lightened till her god lightened heart and her bright face recorded the answer to her prayers and samuel was hers by a conscious faith and a nation was restored by faith samuel was born in answer to the powerful prayer of hana for the solomon covenant which she made with god if he would grant her request must not be left out of the account in investigating this incident of a praying woman and the answer she received it is suggestive in james 5:15 that the prayer of faith shall save the sick the word translated means a vow so the prayer in its highest form of faith is that prayer which carries the whole man as a sacrificial offering thus devoting the whole man himself and his all to god in a definite intelligent vow never to be broken in a quenchless and impassioned desire for heaven such an attitude of self devotement to god mightily helps praying samson is somewhat of a paradox when we examine his religious character but amid all his faults which were grave in the extreme he knew the god who hears prayer and he knew how to talk to god no farness to which israel had gone no depth to which israel had fallen no chains however iron with which israel was bound but that their cry but that their cry to god easily spanned the distance fathomed the depths and broke the chains it was the lesson they were ever learning and always forgetting 
that prayer always brought God to their deliverance and that there was nothing too hard for God to do for his people. We find all of God's saints in straits at different times in some way or another. Their straits are, however, often the heralds of their great triumphs. But for whatever cause their straits come, or of what kind soever, there is no strait of any degree of direness, or from any source whatsoever of any nature, whatsoever from which prayer could not extricate them. The great strength of Samson does not relieve him nor extricate him out of his straits. Read what the scriptures say. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bonds and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore athirst, and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst? and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jar, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. We have another incident in the case of this strange Old Testament character showing how when in great straits their minds involuntarily turn to God in prayer. However irregular in life they were, however far from God they departed, however far from God they departed, however sinful they might be, when trouble came upon these men, they invariably called upon God for deliverance, and as a rule, when they repented, God heard their cries and granted their requests. And granted their requests. This incident comes at the close of Samson's life and shows us how his life ended. Read the record as found in Judges 16. Samson had formed an alliance with. Delilah. Samson had formed an alliance with Delilah, a heathen woman, and she in connivance with the Philistines sought to discover the source of his immense strength. Three successive times she failed and at last and at last her, pers her persistence and at last her persistence and womanly arts persuaded Samson to divulge to her the wonderful secret. So in an unsuspecting hour he disclosed to her the fact that the source of his strength was in his hair which had never been cut and she deprived him of his great physical power by cutting off his hair. She called for the Philistines, and they came and put out his eyes, and otherwise 
mistreated him on an occasion when the philistines were gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to dagon their idol god they called for samson to make sport for them and the following is the account as he stood there presumably the laughing stock of these enemies of his and of god and samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand suffer me that i may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth that i may lean upon them now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the philistines were there and there were upon the roof about 3000 men and women that beheld while samson made sport and samson called unto the lord and said o lord god remember me i pray thee and strengthen me i pray thee only this once my god that i may be at once avenged of the philistines for my two eyes and samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one which his right hand and of the other with his left and samson said let me die with the philistines and he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were there within so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life prayer and praying men by <coughs> edward mckendry bounds chapter 2 praying saints of the old testaments continued bishop lambeth and wainwright had a great me mission in Osaka, Japan. One day the order came from high up that no more meetings would be allowed in the city by protestants. Lambeth and Wainwright did all they could but the high officials were obstinate and unrelenting. they then retired to the room of prayer supper time came and the japanese girl came to summon them to their meal but she fell under the power of prayer mrs lambert came to find what the matter was and fell under the same power they then rose and went to the mission hall and opened it and at once commenced meeting god fell upon the assembly and two of the sons of the city officials came to the altar and were saved next morning one of the officials in authority came to the mission and said go on with your meetings you will not be interrupted the osaka daily paper came out with box car letters saying with box car letters saying the christians god came to town last night reverend h c morrison the christians god came to town last night reverend h c morrison
ജോന ദ മാൻ ഹോ പ്രേഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഫിഷ് ബെലി ബ്രിങ്സ് ടു വ്യൂ അനദർ റിമാർക്കബിൾ ഇൻസ്റ്റൻസ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ഓൾഡ് ടെസ്റ്റമെൻറ്റ് വർ ദീസ് ഹു ആർ ഗിവൻ ടു പ്രേയർ ദിസ് മാൻ ജോന എ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ലോഡ് വേഴ്സ് എ ഫ്യൂഗറ്റീവ് ഫ്രം ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് from the place of duty he had been sent on a mission of warning to wicked Nineveh and had been commanded to cry out against them for their wickedness is come up before me said god but jonah through fear or otherwise declined to obey god and took passage on a ship for tarshish fleeing from god he seems to have overlooked the plain fact that the same god who had sent him on that alarming mission had his eye upon him as he hid himself on board that vessel a storm arose as the vessel was on its way to tarshish and it was decided to throw jona overboard in order to appease god and to avert the destruction of the boat and of all on board but god was there as he had been with yona from the beginning he had prepared a great fish to swallow yona in order to arrest him to defeat him in his fight from the post of duty and to save yona that he might help to carry out the purposes of god it was yona who was in the fish's belly in that great strait and passing through a strange experience who called upon god who heard him and caused the fish to omit him out on dry land what possible force could rescue him from this fearful place he seemed hopelessly lost in the belly of hell as good as dead and damned but he prays what else can he do and this is just what he had been accustomed to do when in trouble before i cried by reason of my affliction unto the lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried i and thou hardest my voice and the lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out jona upon the dry land like others he joined prayer to a vow he had made for he says in his prayer but i will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving i will pay that that i have owed salvation is of the lord prayer was the mighty force which brought yona from the belly of hell prayer mighty prayer has secured the end prayer brought god to the rescue of unfaithful jona despite his sin of fleeing from duty and god could not deny his prayer nothing is too hard for prayer because nothing is too hard for god that answered prayer of jona in the fish's belly and its mighty results became an old testament type of the miraculous power displayed in the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead our lord puts his seal of truth upon the fact of jona's prayer and resurrection nothing can be simpler than these cases of god's mighty deliverance nothing is plainer than that prayer has to do with god directly and simply nothing is clearer than that prayer has its only worth and significance in the great fact that god hears and answers prayer this the old testament saints strongly believed it is the one fact that stands out continuously and prominently in their lives they were essentially men of prayer how greatly we need a school to teach the art of praying the simplest of all arts and mightiest of all forces is ever in danger of being forgotten or depraved the further we get away from our mother's knees the further do we get away from the true art of praying all our after schooling and our after teachers and teachers 
the lessons of prayer men prayed well in old testament times because they were simple men and lived in simple times they were child like lived in child like times and had child like faith they were child like lived in child like times and had child like faith in citing the old testament saints noted for their praying habits by no means must david be overlooked a man who preeminently was a man of prayer with him prayer was a habit for we hear him say evening and morning and at noon will i pray and cry aloud prayer with the sweet psalmist of israel was no strange occupation he knew the way to god and was often found in that way it is no wonder we hear his call so dear and impressive o oh, come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker he knew god as the one being who could answer prayer o oh, thou that hearest prayer to thee shall all flesh come when god smote the child born of betseba when god smote the child born of betseba because david had by his grievous sins given occasion of the enemies of god to blaspheme it is no surprise that we find him engaged in a weak prayer asking god for the life of the child the habit of his life accepted itself in this great emergency in his home and we find him fasting and praying for the child to recover the fact that god denied his request does not at all affect the question of david's habit of praying even though he did not receive what he asked for his faith in god was not in the least affected the fact is that while god did not give him the life of that baby boy he afterward gave him another son even solomon so that possibly the latter son was a far great blessing to him than would have been the child for whom he prayed in close connection with this season of prayer we must not overlook david's penitential praying when nathan david's penitential praying when nathan by command of god uncovered david's two great sins of adultery and murder at once david acknowledged his wickedness saying unto nathan i have sinned and as showing his deep and as showing his deep grief over his sin his heartbroken spirit and his genuine repentance it is only necessary to read psalm 51 where confession of sin deep humiliation and prayer are the chief ingredients of the psalm david knew where to find a sin pardoning god and was received back again and had the joys of salvation restored to him by earnest sincere penitential praying thus are all sinners brought into the divine favor thus do they find pardon and thus do they find a new heart the entire book of psalms brings prayer to the front and prayer fairly bristles before our eyes as we read this devotional book of the scriptures nor must even solomon be overlooked in the famous catalog of men who prayed in old testament times whatever their faults they did not forget the god who hears prayer nor did they cease to seek the god of prayer while this wise man in his later life departed from god and his son sat under a cloud we find him praying at the commencement of his reign solomon went to gibeon to offer sacrifice which always meant that prayer went in close companionship with sacrifice and while there the lord appeared to solomon in a vision by night saying unto him ask what i shall give thee the sequel shows the material out of which solomon's character was formed what was his request 
Oh Lord my God, Thou has made Thy servant king instead of my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. And Thy servant is in the midst of Thy people, which Thou hast chosen a great people, that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give therefore Thy servant an understanding heart to judge Thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this Thy so great a people? We do not wonder that it is recorded as a result of such praying, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast nor has asked the life of thy enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to reason judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word, lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Also I have given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. What praying was this? What self deprecation and simplicity. I am but a little child. How he specified the one thing needful, and see how much more he received than that for which he asked. Take the remarkable prayer at the dedication of the temple. Possibly this is the longest recorded prayer in God's word. How comprehensive, pointed, intensive it is. Solomon could not afford to lay the foundation to lay the foundations of God's house in anything else but in prayer. Solomon could not afford to lay the foundations of God's house in anything else but in prayer. And God heard this prayer as he heard him before. And when Solomon had made an end of his praying, the fire came down from heaven and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Thus God attested the acceptance of this house of worship and of Solomon the praying king. The list of these Old Testament saints given to prayer grows as we proceed and is too long to notice at length all of them. But the name of Isaiah, the great evangelical prophet, and that of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, must not be left out of the account. Still others might be mentioned these are sufficient and with their names we may close the list. Let careful readers of the old scriptures keep the prayer question in mind and they will see how great a place prayer occupied in the minds and lives of the men of those early days. Prayer and Praying Men by Edward McHenry Bounds Chapter 3 Chapter 3 Abraham the Man of Prayer O oh, for determined men and women who will rise early and really burn out for God O oh, for a faith that will sweep into heaven with the early dawning of the morning and have ships from a shoreless sea loaded in the soul's harbor array, the ordinary laborer has knocked the dew from his scythe, or the huckster has turned from his pallet of straw to spread nature's treasures of fruit before the early buyers, Rev. Homer W. Hodge. Abraham, the friend of God, was a striking illustration of one of the Old Testament saints who believed strongly in prayer. 
Abraham was not a shadowy figure by any means. Abraham was not a shadowy figure by any means. In the simplicity and dimness of the patriarchal patriarchal dispensation as illustrated by him we learn the worth of prayer as well as discover its antiquity the fact is prayer reaches back to the first stages of man on earth we see how the energy of prayer is absolutely required in the simplest as well as in the most complex dispensations of god's grace when we study abraham's character we find that after his call to go out into an unknown country on his journey with his family and his household servants wherever he tarried by the way for the night or longer he always erected an altar and called upon the name of the lord and this man of faith and prayer was one of the first to erect a family altar around which to gather his household and offer the sacrifices of worship of praise and of prayer these altars built by abraham were first of all essentially altars about which he gathered his household as distinguished from secret prayer as god's revelations became fuller and more perfect abraham's prayerfulness increased and it was at one of the spiritual eras that abraham fell on his face and god talked with him on still another occasion we find this man the father of the faithful on his face before god astonished almost to incredulity at the purposes and revelations of almighty god to him in promising him a son in his old age and the wonderful engagements which god made concerning his promised son even ishmael's destiny is shaped by abraham's prayer when he prayed oh that ishmael might live before thee what a remarkable story is that of abraham's standing before god repeating his intercessions for the wicked city of sodom the home of his nephew loth doomed by god's decision to destroy it doomed by god's decision to destroy it sodom's fate was for a while stayed by abraham's praying and was almost entirely relieved by the humility and insistence of the praying of this man who believed strongly in prayer and who knew how to pray no other resource was open to abraham to save sodom but prayer perhaps the failure to ultimately rescue sodom from her doom of destruction was due to abraham's optimistic view of the spiritual condition of things in that city it might have been possible who knows that if abraham had entreated god once more and asked him to spare the city if even one righteous man was found there for loth's sake he might have heeded abraham's request not another instance in the life of abraham as showing how he was a man of prayer and had power with god abraham had journeyed to and was sojourning in gerar fearing that abimelech might kill him and appropriate sara his wife to his own lustful uses he decided he deceived abimelech by claiming that sara was his sister god appeared unto abimelech in a dream and warned him not to touch sara telling him that she was the wife of abraham and not his sister then he said unto abimelech now restore therefore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shall live and the conclusion of the incident is thus recorded so abraham prayed unto god and god healed abimelech and his wife and his maid servants and they bare children but the lord had passed closed up all the wombs of the house of abimelech because of sara his wife this was a case somewhat on the line of that of job at the close of his fearful experience
and his terrible trials when his friends not understanding job neither comprehending god's dealings with the servant of his falsely charged job with being in sin as the cause of all his troubles god god said to these friends of job god said to these friends of job my servant job shall pray for you for him will i accept and the lord turned the captivity of job when he had prayed for his servants almighty god knew his servant job as a man of prayer and he could afford to send these friends of job to him to pray in order to carry out and fulfill his plans and purposes it was abraham's rule to stand before the lord in prayer it was abraham's rule to stand before the lord in prayer his life was surcharged with prayer and abraham's dispensation was sanctified by prayer for wherever he halted in his pilgrimage prayer was his inseparable accompaniment accompaniment for wherever he halted in his pilgrimage prayer was his inseparable accompaniment side by side with the altar of sacrifice was the altar of prayer he got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the lord in prayer